Hi, it's Rod, and this one's called God's Joy in a Suffering World. So it's like this is a How to Get Your Joy from God manual, if you want to read it. So the Bible says that uh, sin separates us from God. The Bible says that in God's presence is the fullness of joy. God's solution to our depression problem, our anger problem, is more joy from His Holy Spirit, from His presence. Anger is a sign of trying to get your happiness from the creation, not the Creator. When you're full of God's joy, you don't have any anger. You don't have any depression. So we need to deal with our sin. It says in the Bible that uh, there's joy in the presence of the angels over one sinner that repents. So there's like joy in heaven over a sinner that repents. So sort of like the prodigal son coming back to his father's presence. God wants relationship. He loves it when people choose to draw close to him. He draws close to them. The Bible says that in God's presence is a fullness of joy. It says draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. We can't get close to God through doing good works, but we can get close to God through Jesus' perfect good works done for us. The blood of Jesus can bring us into the presence of God. It's the only thing that can. It's not like God's got a whip in his hand saying, try harder, work harder, then you can come into my presence. He's pointing to the cross saying, my son Jesus took all the punishment for you. Come on in. But we're in a spiritual war and Satan doesn't want us to believe in God's truth about how to be joyful or believe in God's truth about how to get saved from our sins. So we have to learn God's truth in order to understand how to get joy from him. And then fight off Satan trying to tell us we can't be happy now. We don't have enough created things to be happy. We need to believe at all times. All I need is God to be happy now. Because <laughs> that's what the Bible teaches. Those that don't believe the truth about how to be joyful God's way aren't very joyful. Those who believe the truth about how to be joyful God's way are very joyful. It's like disobedient to God Christians aren't very joyful. But obedient to God, Christians are. You'll know them by their joy, their love, their peace, their fruit, or the Holy Spirit. It says that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. We're not like waiting for God to fix the world, to make it a good world for us before we'll be joyful, solve all our problems, then I can be joyful or something. This world is filled with chaos and sin and evil, and it's not supposed to bother our joy from God. We're only responsible for our own choices, whether we want to obey God or not. We can't be responsible for what other people choose to do. We can rejoice in the Lord always. All I need is God to be happy now. I don't care what's on the wicked land screen, the TV set, the internet, all the wicked people and misery or something like that. I'm just looking at God and saying, I can be joyful in your presence right now, God. It's like I got this little happy face on my computer internet screen. I look at it, I can be joyful now. God's here. My joy comes from his presence. Through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you for making me joyful. That's all we have to do. It's not through if I fix all my problems, if I work harder or something, to finish some goal or something. No, you can have fullness of joy at all times. You can be content in whatever circumstance you're in. So it's like the Bible teaches lots of suffering in this world. You can see Satan tempting Adam and Eve to try to look for their happiness from the creation rather than the creator, get their joy from some fruit on a tree of knowledge or something. It didn't make them joyful. They should have been 
trying to be close to God in the Garden of Eden to be joyful, not wandering away from God into sin with Satan to try to find it from the creation. But that's the Satan's temptation for us. He's been doing it ever since the beginning of time for mankind. Try to get your happiness from the creation, not the creator. It's up to us whether we want to believe that lie or not. You can't be happy without the creation, says Satan. You can't be happy just with God, says Satan. You've got to resist him. No, the Bible says in God's presence is the fullness of joy. The Bible says I can draw close to God through the blood of Jesus. I can be happy now. I can be content in whatever circumstance I'm in. I'm a bride of the king of the universe. I can be happy now. I am a child of perfect, awesome, powerful God. I got a second chance to go to paradise heaven after I die. I'm happy now. And that should be our witness to others. Christianity works. I got joy. You want it too? Instead of Christianity doesn't make me very happy and I got to sin a lot to try to be happy. That's not a good witness to anybody. Repent. Get closer to God. Be happy now. It's, it's our fault. We can't be blaming others because they're doing such and such. I can't be happy now. Forgive those that are doing evil. Draw close to God yourself and be happy now. So in the Bible, there's lots of suffering. It doesn't sugarcoat life or something. We hear of Noah suffering. He's living in a very evil world and very suffering world. And yet, he can have a good relationship with God, helping him through it. It's like the Bible teaches that the wicked get slavery. So we see in the days of Moses that uh, he's like this slave child or something and suffering. Then he ends up murdering somebody. And then he seeks God's help to get delivered from that slavery. If we want to repent of our sins, we get free from the, the harmful effects of slavery. We may still have to be in slavery because wicked people get slavery. But like Moses, we can handle it with God's help too. Like Joseph, we can handle slavery with God's help too. Like Daniel, we can handle slavery with God's help too. And it's not just slavery to wicked rulers or something, slave masters. It can be slavery to Satan. It says if you want to sin, you let demons in. If you want to sin, Satan takes you captive to do it his will. We're responsible for believing Satan's lies or not believing Satan's lies, believing God's truth or not believing God's truth. Satan says you can't be happy now. You need more creative things. God says you can be happy now. All you need is me. We decide what we want to believe, and then it creates joy or it creates depression and anger. And we're the ones looking for our happiness in the wrong place with Satan. Like when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, Satan was saying, you can't be happy with God, Jesus. You need to get it from being king of this world. Jesus said, no, I want to get it from God even though I suffer in this world. I want to be the king of heaven, not the king of the earth right now. And we're waiting for everlasting joy in heaven after we die. We're struggling to have joy now in a suffering world, but we can have it if we want to. Like Paul said, we can learn to be content in whatever circumstance we're in. <laughs> you got Daniel suffering in slavery, Joseph suffering in slavery, you got Job suffering with attacks of Satan on his life as a love test or whatever. You got King David suffering in sin. He's trying to get his happiness from sex or something. It doesn't work out for him. He starts murdering people. A little sin can turn into a whole lot of sin, and sin separates us from God. Sin is like trying to get your happiness from the creation, like a prodigal son or King David or something. And like King David needed to find out, he had to repent of his sins, get back to the joy of God's presence or whatever. And then when you're joyful, you're not thinking of sinning because you found the happiness you're looking for. It's like... Uh, when you're getting your joy from God, you're not depressed. When you're getting your joy from God, you're not angry anymore. You found what you're looking for. Joy destroys those negative emotions. The negative emotions can destroy joy, but that's because you're trying to find your happiness in the wrong place from the creation, not the creator, like Adam tried to do, like King David tried to do or something. 
learn lessons from their lives that that doesn't make you very happy. Stay away from sin. <laughs> and seek to get close to God through the blood of His Son, Jesus, and get in His presence and get a fullness of joy no matter what's going on around you. <laughs> it's like I had this vision where I was talking to Jesus on a park bench. And I asked him, uh, what does the future look like, Jesus? And he said to me, economic collapse, famine, rioting, apostasy, and World War III. And I was thinking, how am I going to be happy thinking of that future? And then the vision turned into me dancing with Jesus around World War III. I'm looking at people getting shot and destroyed in a world war. And I look at Jesus, and he just says to me, don't let it bother you, Rod. I control that. It says in the Bible to praise God with the dance. If you're really joyful, you start dancing. And that's the way it should be. I'm here with Jesus. I am with my perfect husband, Jesus. I'm dancing with him. Praising him with the dance. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. Who cares what's on the TV screen, the internet screen, how bad this world is, how bad it's getting worse or whatever towards the future tribulation. So you have Jesus living in a suffering world. For the joy set before him in heaven, Jesus endured the suffering of the cross. You got Paul living in a rat infested prison, being persecuted. Still he's telling people to rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice always. Be joyful always. I've learned to be content in a rat infested prison. Jesus is here. So it shouldn't matter what we're going through. If Jesus is here in a fiery furnace in a lion's den in a rat infested prison in a Planet of the Apes type FEMA camp or something, well, we could be happy now. It's like Job saying in the midst of his horrible suffering, even though God slay me, yet will I trust in him. Yet will I try to find my joy in him. Jesus said, Rejoice and be glad. Great is your reward in heaven when you suffer persecution. It's not supposed to destroy your joy, the world being all crazy and upside down and seeing suffering and evil. It's like we should be able to be like a Noah, happy, regardless of everybody's drowning around us. Because God's doing something good for us. God could have saved the people in the days of Noah if they wanted to repent, but they didn't want to repent. That's their problem. It's not God's problem. God had to drown those people in the days of Noah, else they would have murdered everybody. We wouldn't be alive today. For the good of some people, God has to punish a lot of wicked people for his plans to go in this world. Because of free will choice. And God doesn't want to make us robots, so he gives us free will choice. They choose evil and suffering, but that doesn't have to stop us from being joyful in the Lord ourselves. So... We shouldn't be waiting for God to fix all our problems and make this world into a good world, then we'll be happy, or waiting till we get to heaven, then we'll be happy. God's waiting for us. I can give you fullness of joy now if you want it. It's coming from me if you want it. Don't listen to Satan or whatever, like Adam. To get rid of that anger and that depression and be filled with joy instead. It's like, um, I was in McDonald's. <laughs> Looking at this woman with a little girl holding her hand walking across the parking lot. And I felt like God was saying to me, Is that the way you feel with me, Rod? I'm always with you, holding your hand. Filling you with joy. Little kids smiling and happy, holding her mummy's hand. Walking across the parking lot. That's the way it should be. Jesus said, I'm not alone. My father's with me. As if Jesus is holding the hand of his father like a little child. And he's joyful. It's like uh, our career in life should be like a uh, joyful, suffering servant of all. It's, it's as we obey God that he makes us happy. When you make God happy, you make yourself happy. One scripture says, this is my happy way of living, obeying your commandments. That's the secret to joy, obedience. And there's joy in heaven over those who repent. 
like a prodigal son coming out of the pig pen and starting to party with Father God or something like that. Because he wants to be with Father God. Father God wants to bless him. God wants to bless us in his presence. So, disobedient to God Christians don't have much joy, but obedient to God Christians can have joy. It's like an old habit we got to break. We probably had godless parents trying to find happiness from the creation, from sex, drugs, rock and roll, money, or whatever. Didn't make them very happy. But if we become saved at some point, we can learn a new way to be happy, and then we got to change our way of thinking. I'm not going to try to get my happiness from sex, drugs, rock and roll, TV, junk food, whatever, creative thing. Satan's telling me he'll make me happy. I'm going to get my happiness from God instead. I don't care if I'm fasting. I don't care. I want to get into prayer and get closer to God for happiness. The people that pray a lot should be very joyful. <laughs> closer to God you get, the more joy you get filled with. It's about stop trying to believe in a genie Jesus or something. You got to make everything perfect and fix every problem and bless me with material possessions or whatever or heal me of all diseases. Then I can be happy or something. No, even though Satan slay me, even though Satan sifted me like weed, I can still be joyful now. So the Bible talks about all these suffering people, yet they're trying to have a good relationship with God. And God's trying to encourage them to fear not and be full of my joy through all these problems. We're supposed to learn that lesson too. I got lots of problems in my life. I got lots of pain in my body or whatever. Back pain, skin disease pain, exhaustion pain from the stressful world or something. But you can still be joyful with God in it. Like Paul going through all these persecutions but still saying, I'm content. Rejoice always, be full of joy always. And Jesus saying, I want to give you my joy and I don't want anybody able to take it away from you. Not Satan, not evil people. So it's like I have a motto. I got to live in a suffering world. But God can help me through it. Bring good out of it for me. Make me happy in it. And help me not be bothered by it. God keeps trying to tell me, stop trying to trust in yourself. Stop trying to get your happiness from creation. Start trying to get your happiness from me. It's changing your way of thinking around from Satan's wrong way to think to God's right way to think about how to be happy now. Before you'll ever be happy, you've got to think how to be joyful scripturally and follow that. It's through obedience. It's through being close to God, which obedience keeps you close to God. Sin separates you from God. It's about a spiritual war and understanding where these thoughts come to try to tell you the opposite of the way to be joyful. <laughs> Resist following them. Stop believing Satan's lies. Start believing God's truth about how to be joyful. And uh, we can get to the point where we can dance with Jesus around World War III. We don't have to let any of this wicked land bother us. God's not bad because it's a wicked land. He's good. He's given us free will choice and they're choosing to create a wicked land like the days of Noah. We don't have to fear the tribulation or this evil world. God can help us through it. Fiery furnaces, lion's den, raises from the dead. Nothing too difficult for God to do for me. Fear not, I'll hold your hand. I'll help you, says God. Like a little child with her mummy or something. Like a little child with the perfect Father God. In the arms of your perfect husband Jesus right now. In God's presence as a fullness of joy. And then when you die and go to heaven, it's everlasting joy there. But God doesn't want us to just wait until the suffering stops, the problems stop. The world becomes good someday. We get to heaven or something. He wants us joyful now. He wants us to have this friendship relationship with him like Abraham and not let any suffering bother us. Be like a happy Noah dancing on the ark or something while everybody drowns. Why? Because God's delighted in your obedience. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your Lord now. In this life, not just in heaven later. So God wants us to try to stop waiting. I gotta fix my problems. This God has to heal my suffering. Then I can be happy now. 
No. Our joy is going to motivate other people to want to change and stop doing evil around us. Say your family or something. Your joy might affect your wife or husband to want to seek God for that joy too. And then, like marriage relationships can only work well when both people are satisfied and fulfilled with God and shared it with each other. And even if you're in a bad marriage or something, you can be full of joy even though your unbelieving spouse or something isn't. It doesn't matter. If we're only responsible for our own choices. Forgive those that do evil things towards us. Let God heal us of that evil. Get close to God. Be full of joy and peace and forgiveness for others. Then the depression goes. Then the angers go. Then the demons flee or whatever. But if you want to sin, you let demons in. If you want to look for your happiness in sinful ways, like a prodigal son or something, you let the destruction in to your joy. But you don't have to do that. Let God show you any sin in your life. Repent of it. Get into his presence. Listen to what he's telling you to do to obey him. And start joyfully obeying God in this earth. Like Paul tried to do. And don't let the wicked world bother you. God's in control of it. He can make you joyful in it. Don't let it bother you. And you're on your way to heaven for everlasting joy after you die. So that's a bit about God's joy in a suffering world. <laughs>